And we are back, and we just finished watching 2023's American Fiction, rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 57 minutes. This is currently streaming on MGM Plus and Prime Video, but also to buy rent on Prime Video. This comes to us from director Jefferson Cord, who also does double duty as a screenplay writer who adapted this from Percival Everett's novel and was also the winner of Best Adapted Screenplay at the 2024 Oscars. This is the story of Thelonious Monk Ellison exquisitely. I've been using that word a lot lately, but exquisitely portrayed by the always fabulous Jeffrey Wright as a writer who's got a very severe case of writer's block. And I don't no, he doesn't have writer's block at all. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's, you're still thinking story. of throw mama from the yeah. train? <laughs> this is the story of Thelonious Monk Ellison, exquisitely played by Jeffrey Wright, a novelist who is trying very hard to get his latest novel published, but it's being rejected by all the literary houses, even though his agent seems to be doing a good job of trying to get the book out there. It's just not what people want. He writes excellent books as the agents displayed with the whole Johnny Walker thing. He, right. write, he writes Johnny Walker blue type books. books. And but nobody want nobody wants stuff. that because they want something that's easily accessible. And consumable. And consumable, which is why... He's having a hard time selling his books. He's having book. a hard time because he's not the type who... He doesn't char- pander. Exactly. His character, he doesn't want to pander. And he also doesn't want to profit from black trauma yeah. stories, which seems well, also, to be I, the order of the day. I think it's also he he wants yeah he wants to write more highbrow stuff because even in the beginning when he's talking with like that school council, that other guy that's there is just like, well, written, you know, maybe books. when you go to the airport, you could pick up one of my books and read it when you get your neck pillow. It, yeah. It's he. It's just that he just doesn't want to write that type of stuff, right. and especially. Trash. The kind of stuff that basically, I, I, I wouldn't say idolize, but, but uh, shows just the stereotypical view of black life in America where it's all about rap and drug deals gone bad and black uh, young men being black killed young men being police. killed. And, and, it, it, and not that those things it? don't happen. Not that it doesn't happen, but it, it's sort of like. It's not exclusively it, the stories of black Americans. Right. In his eyes, he feels that it's. That stuff is getting so gets so much prevalence, not because of of black people, but because of white audiences, white audiences or, or non black audiences desire to just see that. Tra- what did you call it? Trauma porn, right? Which it is. Which it is. I mean that that this this is something that I've heard mentioned for like a, at least a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I remember back there was I forgot what it was. Somebody what was that? Oh, what was that movie? The forty-year-old, ver- the forty-year-old version. Version. Oh, yeah. Poverty porn. Poverty porn. That was right. also a, a. That was good too. I that, like that. That was that was a good movie but too. This was next this, level. Oh my god! This is this yeah, is next level. Absolutely next level. This wow. is this is a fantastic movie. So I saw this on a plane ride and was so sad that you weren't there to share it with me, <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like much like this watch, there's so much to just watch and unpack here this story there is no filler there is absolutely zero percent body fat on this baby and it is magnificent the writing chef's kiss the performances out freaking standing from everybody from everybody everybody. does an amazing job and as i mean you you've you flagged it out but God damn, that writing was super so sharp. There sharp. are so many excellent lines in this movie. movie. Oh. So many jokes that that just like hit, and some of them they hit like a second after you after it, it happens, where yeah. you're you're just like like there was that one bit that I mentioned where he's on like the um the judges council, oh the literary God. judges that council, scene. and they're voting on the best book, and the uh, three white people, the three are white people are like, well, three to two are that, that's just how it is, and the two black people, their choice does not. Or their opinion clearly is not being taken into account, and that lady just goes, "This is great because it's so important that black voices be heard," <laughs> and then it just cuts <laughs> to, to the, the next scene. scene. And we after both after it cut, yeah. we're in the next scene, and Jeffrey Wright's like sitting in like the hospital or whatever, the yeah. nursing home. I just bust out laughing because that 
<laughs> that it just scene. it registered in my brain yeah. what had just happened and what yeah. that stupid lady just said. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Well, there's so much of that in this film. Yeah. It is just, it's not like Step Brothers funny, but it is. No, 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 no. This is sharp smart. viewpoints of the world, satire, making fun of. Excellent satire. This excellent is, satire. This is the type of stuff that's, it's kind of rare. Yeah. When it's done this well. Well, yeah. This I is mean, this feels like, like an, an amazing example of this. Yeah, this feels like this script was polished and nurtured and just every joke lands. It, yeah. And yeah. it's not like like we said it's it's not slapstick, it's not mile a minute jokes like airplane or something. It's not it's not it, really vulgar. It's, it's not vulgar. I mean there is profanity, but oh, it's yeah, not yeah. But like But the, the profanity is an absolute service s- to the story. Story. Absolutely. Yeah, and even the reworking of the title yeah, of the, the reworking book. reworking the title. <laughs> and Je- oh my God, Jeffrey Wright is so brilliant, excellent. Brilliant. Like in that meeting yes. when he decides, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like throw a monkey world. wrench in this thing. I'm gonna yeah. sabotage this thing. This. You know, I want to change the title of the book. <laughs> okay, what? Well, let's call it fuck. fuck. <laughs> With a ph? <laughs> no. <laughs> And then, like, the the two people, they're like, can we discuss it? And then they come back. He's fully expecting it to just be like, no. And they're just like, we love it. It's raw. And even him <laughs> and, like, the John Ortiz character, Arthur, were like, what? <laughs> and he just lowers was- his head down to the table. Because <laughs> there's just no stopping it. It's no. like a juggernaut of, we need this. Yes. It we doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you did this as basically a joke. Yeah. It is now taken on a life of its own. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I'm sure that one book will be enough that he can probably profit off of I it. I mean, clearly the... I mean, he, movie deal. Yeah, the movie deal was like, Four what? Million? Four million? <laughs> After, if, if, some, if I wrote a book and they were like, here's 750000 for the rights, and then like a week later, it's like, yeah, four million for the movie deal. I'd be like, what? okay, I'm retired. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Take I don't need easy. any more money than this. My kids don't need any more money yeah. than this. Good Lord. And he just couldn't stop it. He just could not stop it. Oh. All right. Let's get into it. People got to have their poverty porn. They really do. Yeah. They really, really do. So when we open up, like you said, Monk's character is sort of going on a forced sabbatical. That scene is also really great where he's in his classroom and the woman keeps pushing back. Yeah. And it's so stupid because he's trying to explain. We're right. talking about like the South. Right. During this time period. And yeah, that word is going to Prevalent. appear quite frequently. frequently. Yeah. And she's like, well, I don't feel comfortable. I don't, and he's like, well, I got comfortable with yeah, it. Yeah, I got over <laughs> it. I'm sure you can too. <laughs> And I don't know what he said to her after, but she yeah. leaves the classroom crying. Yeah. And then the and next scene is in. Yeah, he gets yeah. called in and he's asked to take a break, I guess. So he comes back to the East Coast because he's living in California now, but he comes back to the East Coast to attend an author's symposium or something. And it's a very Spartan room. There's four yeah. people, four are uh, maybe like a host and three authors and like a smattering of people. And yet as he's walking around, there is an abundance of attendance at Centara Golden's little chat. Yeah. Let's talk about Centara Golden. Ex- also exquisitely played by Issa Rae. What'd you think of her character? Her character was interesting because she's basically doing what he did, but she is not doing it in any sort of parody kind of way no. or, or pandering kind of way she, in, in her mind her stuff is legit legit genuine oh this is our voice yeah and for him it's just more of the same, same stuff, stuff that has been dominating the i guess the book charts right right uh just like poorly written uh even even when they're they're showing because she's like reading the book and they i, I think they show like the the, the the actual text in the book and it's it's yeah. like misspelled and, and everything and it's just for him, for Thelonious, that this is just like yeah. this is this is not literature. This is garbage. This is garbage. You right. may as well just take in a, a a WhatsApp chat and publish it as a book. Right. So her character is again, but later on they have their little back and forth, and they go back and forth. You see each other's points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It is right because I felt like, and I think I turned to you while we were watching the film, and I was like, I I understand both of their points. But I'm 100% with Monk. Yeah, and she too. is so disingenuous because it's not even like 
ha- things that have happened to me or my family. This is all research I have done. Yeah. So you're basically taking other people's stories and profiting off of them, right? And then she makes this whole case like, well, I don't, I don't begrudge what the markets want. Yeah, she understood that. So to her, hey, this, this is all transactional. This is all transactional. There, she's not. She is not trying to make a statement, a statement, or, or change people's lives or anything like that. She knows that. Oh, this the demographic that's actually buying these books wants to read this kind of stuff. So I'm going to provide it for them. For them, right? And I'm going to do my research, and I'm going to yeah. yeah. The only difference between hers, I guess, hers and Thelonious's is Thelonious's was just completely made up, right? As right. far as just. His was like a damnation. It was a, a condemnation of, of everything that, that exists. Right, right. And it's and it, absolutely, and it's funny because originally when he gives it to Arthur, the publisher, he's like, is this for real? Like, are you serious yeah. with this? And he's like, can I send it like as a joke? And he's like, no, I want you to send it straight. Like, it's legit. Yeah. Like, this is a submission. Yeah. Because it, I want to... It's almost like rub the puppy's nose in its mess. Like, well, it's it's funny because he meant the whole thing as satire, but it's completely misunderstood stood. as being a genuine story, right? And that's kind of true of what you see in a lot of media nowadays or a lot of entertainment, where people don't recognize this is supposed to be fiction. satire. And this has been going actually. It's not even nowadays. This has been going on for a long time, and and most most genre of films. Or a lot of genre films, they just completely ignore that. Oh, this is this is a satire, a satire of a certain negative thing that's going on in society, like right. like films like Fight Club and Starship Troopers and Tropic Thunder, Tropic Thunder, and and all of these things. And people just view it at face value, and they're just like, yeah, the boys, the boys. I mean, <laughs> the, the boys, the boys, especially expan- especially right now, now. because yeah. the people who are being sat- satirized. Have they're, just, they're, it's like they're awakening up to the fact that, wait a minute, I think these people are making, making fun, fun of me. me. Yeah. So, yeah, the, that's, the, that's the thing. Excellent, Eric Kripke. Yes. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, that that's the thing that's funny about this is that he, it, it really does mirror the real world in that satire is a hard type of comedy. Yes. And that's what, that's what I really like about this movie because it is a real example of just excellent satire just the madness it, it's the it, madness. that that type of humor it's it makes you think it it's it makes just, you shake it, your head makes you shake your head and it makes you laugh it just hits different right and i love just ridiculous stupid humor and yeah. toilet humor and stepbrothers type stuff but this is different this is smart and it's yeah. from a place that we recognize yeah like this type of humor i I could probably watch this film again and again and none of that humor will ever lose its bite no uh nowadays we i mean we just talked about like throw mama from the train and back in the day those jokes were good yeah nowadays it's not so much i didn't really laugh when he got hit with the frying pan right it it just didn't make me laugh right yeah we laughed multiple times here Oh my God! Yeah. yeah, and the best, like I said in that previous scene, the best kind of laugh is the one that gets you after the fact, right after the fact. Yeah, because that it's just oh my God! Like yeah. you're you're sitting it with it in the moment, and then it just gestates in your head, and you realize, oh, this snap. lady's a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> she has she's in the she's in the room in that situation, and she doesn't realize that what she has said. Yeah. Is the exact opposite of what has just occurred, <laughs> and she's so proud of herself. Oh my God, the pride that that lady feels! Yes, because for being oh, an ally, for being <laughs> <laughs> a word that is yeah. like way overused. These oh days. my God, oh, yeah, uh, seriously, yeah. if they could make like little medals and little pins, it, so for people to put on their shirts, I'm they, an they ally. Oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> they should put like an ally for every different downtrodden community so yes. everybody oh look I have a complete sash <laughs> like, like a, like a Cub I've Scout. collected all yeah oh, <laughs> gotta get them all <laughs> it's like minorities are Pokemon now yeah oh <laughs> god <laughs> um so yeah so I thought I thought her character was interesting because she's unapologetic about it too yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she under. I think she understands the situation, but like she, she says, it's this is what people want, and if I'm not going to give it to them, somebody else will. Somebody else will. Right, right. 
and but it was still interesting. I I love the exchange between Monk's character and Centaur's character, especially when he was like, "Okay, you said it was pandering, but what makes this book different than yours?" Than yours. When he says that, I think the first time I was like, oh. "Yeah," because you could see her demeanor completely changes. changes. Like right, her hackles come up. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, she tried to use the, "Oh, is it just me, or is it because?" Oh no, uh, I forgot what she said, but is it or is it? Do you have a problem with black women? Yeah, it's it's, and it it's was like that. Yeah, you're you're kind of like you're you're throwing out a cliched defense, right? Right. And uh, that's not what he meant at all. Right. It, it's, it's like quiz lady. Learn to drive. Racist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but the guy heads poked out, and he's also Asian. <laughs> the other thing that I I want to talk about is the really poignant and lovely family drama that happens interwoven throughout all this madness with the book yeah we haven't even we haven't even scratched the surface that that just makes this story so much richer elevates it to just amazing yeah and it's it's like the perfect juxtaposition about his family versus this made-up story and the things that are happening with this book i love tracy ellis ross in this and I was so sad. She was sad. so good. She oh, was don't, so... Don't say anything. Oh, okay, we won't give it away, but... You know, get rid of those sad bit, and when you edit this, yes. don't say oh, she was so sad. I just, thought, just say she was great in this. I thought Tracy Ellis Ross was magnificent in this. She doesn't get a lot of screen time, but she is magnificent in this. Yeah. Let's talk about Sterling K. Brown, who is also just... Cliff, the brother, too, excellent, yeah. excellent, and I love their journey together from beginning yeah, to it's, end. It's very, it's tumultuous. A lot, lot of tumult. Yeah, it's very there's tumultuous. A lot lot, some animosity city, there. But I think by the end of the story, they're in a good place, and I love the callback to the previous joke. Oh, like, yeah. oh, who's you're gonna have a hard time casting me? It's like, <laughs> oh, you're already casted, and then I won't say it. But yeah, the writing is just phenomenal phenomenal i would be curious as lazy as i am i'm actually going to put that book in my amazon cart i am curious to read this book now i'm really curious to read because this screenplay which i don't think strays too much from the source material is just gangbusters it's just gangbusters so again shout out to percival everett the author but also cord jefferson all the flowers for bringing this to to the masses because nobody reads anymore let's be honest and i'm sure yeah. maybe everett's book did well but you have another audience here yeah in the movie medium so yes just hats off uh, getting back to the store or the film leslie uggams the heartbreak of that whole uh, that situation, situation as well yeah. when children sort of become caretakers so of the parents, yeah. the parents and just the things that are said hurtful things that are said not intentionally but it's still hurtful yeah because i mean yeah deep down inside that's at some point that's that that's what that person felt like and that's what that person thought yeah yeah and in the beginning they, now they don't have like the filter they, right. don't, they don't have the empathy they don't have right that i guess i don't know that love yeah yeah the, the dynamic changes right yeah the beginning where she's talking to Lisa and she mentions Larry and Lisa's caught off guard. She goes, mom, you know, I divorced from Larry. Yeah. And I don't know if the mother understood or maybe she was being defensive, but she's like, Oh no, I know. I just thought he'd want to be here. I think she was being a little defensive. defensive. I think it's just one of those things where it's just like, you just forget stuff. And it's just like, I shouldn't have forgotten that. And right. I don't want to seem I don't want to seem weak. Right. I don't want to seem frail. And Lisa said the same thing. You forget dentist appointment. You don't forget that your yeah. daughter is divorced from a guy. Yeah. So I thought that was very, very interesting, too. But uh, again, going back to Sterling K. Brown's. I know we're all over the place here. I, I'm just this movie gives me life. It really gives me life. I'm just I want to talk about it all day long. The Sterling K. Brown character has some really gorgeous moments at the beach i won't say too much about it at the beach in the swimming pool in the nursing home at the end and i love their journey as men as brothers and what that looks like and that is also i love how that's interwoven with the craziness and the madness of the book and the story of the book where you have 
this other B story going on where you see Monk and his family, and not just his family, but even his extended family. I loved the Lorraine character. Yeah, she was I she loved was the Lorraine character. Even, even Maynard. And Maynard, too, right? Yeah, yeah just lo- that scene when she's like, your family. Oh, and she hugs him, and you could see, you could just see that, like, that was definitely what Cliff needed in that moment. Yeah. That was absolutely what he needed in that moment. And you also see, at least to me, that was my interpretation, how Monk realizes, look, this I just got a lesson in being classy here, didn't I? And then he turns to Maynard as a joke and is like, I regret to inform you, but this will, in a couple of hours, this will be, be your, your family, family as well. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the jokes were just so good. And I think I mentioned this to you before. This is a film that the wordplay here is so exquisite. It just, it's so gorgeous now, but in 20 years, it will still sound just as good. Yeah. Just as good. Yeah. There are some great lines in this one. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's talk about Coraline, played by the lovely Erica Alexander, who's just gorgeous. She has a gorgeous face. I, I felt a little, I mean, I think you're supposed to feel kind of sad for that because she seems all in. Yeah. In this relationship. And he's just got, Thelonious just seems to, he, he wants to con- compartmentalize and contain everything, everything and just bear this burden on his own so, to the point where he just sort of like, he has like these defenses. It's like, oh, how are you getting all this money? And he's like, well, uh, maybe I'll send you a couple of the bills and, and oh, no, no like thanks. No. Or when he turns, when she asks him when and she, he's mean. Yeah. when He's the, like, you're my book- girlfriend, not my bookkeeper. Exactly. <sighs> and he, that is like, that's when it starts. Yeah. And you see the, later on you hear like, okay, well, the dad was kind of like this too. Mm-hmm. And apparently he was the, he was like the dad's favorite or, or something. Yeah. That's why he, he didn't have as close relationship with his siblings. Yeah. Yeah. The, that relationship, I, I felt bad for her because she, like I said, she is all in. She wants to be there for him. She wants to be that support. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, that's fundamental in any good relationship that you support one another, that you share with one another. And he's... He's just keeping it close to the vest. He he doesn't want to reveal this this big secret. And if if you could tell it to anybody, it should be it should be the person who you feel other. is your significant other. And the fact that he can't, and then it it's like it gets thrust into the conversation between them, right. and he can't he honestly can't yeah he can't honestly say what's going on. Oh, the that was that 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 little dinner conversation where she finally says, "I think you should leave." leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he's like, oh, you know what I think? And then she shuts it down. She's like, I think you should leave. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. She did not suffer fools. Yeah. Which makes the conversation at the wedding with Cliff even more poignant, right? Because he says, people want to love you. Let them love all of you. Yeah. Uh, like I said, so many Ugh. goddamn good lines in this yeah. movie. It's it's Yeah, this, this movie's the goat. Yeah, this is such a good movie. <laughs> At some point, we're going to have to watch Oppenheimer, but right now, I feel like American Fiction was a better movie. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as I can't imagine Oppenheimer as, as good writing. No. It's probably not as funny. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even Barbie, uh, like the, Barbie. the wit in Barbie was just so... I mean, I know that these people have to vote for like... I mean, it's, it's, let's be honest, the, the Oscars are a popularity contest, right? So, uh, but it, it's still unfortunate. I think it's also, I think money has a lot to do with it. Oh, too. I'm sure. It, I'm sure. Yeah. It's, you know, vote for us or our production studio won't fund you anymore. Possibly. Uh, yeah. I'm, I have no doubt. Yeah. Because the people, well, I, I think the people that vote for the best picture, it's, it's the producers, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Yeah. You know. Well, I think all of them, right? If you're. If you pay your dues, I think you get to vote. I don't know how that works, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. But it's funny that you said that because I always think about, was it Dennis Leary on Conan where he was like, basically like, just send me shit. I'll vote for your movie. Yeah. Yeah. You don't got to, you don't got to do a song and dance with me. Isn't that what he said? Basically like. Probably. Yeah. Oh, there definitely is bribery. I mean, come on. The parties. Just oh the, my gosh. Just the parties themselves. I know. I want to I want to go just to the party? get. You know how to vote, don't you? Yeah. I want to go just to get one of those swag bags. Yeah. It's all. It, it, yeah. There's no integrity there. <laughs> <laughs> integrity? What's that? I'm not going to give it away, but Lisa's letter wrecks me. Anyway. Oh, yes. Okay. 
Moving on. Um, she's hilarious. She's just so good. So good. I love her Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade <laughs> joke. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I really just top to bottom. So good. So good. And it's it's so refreshing to see something like this that is, and I'm saying this as a compliment, that is so bipolar because you have Two separate stories going on, very different. You have Monk, the writer, and the shenanigans in that part of the world. And then you have Monk, the son and brother on the other end of the spectrum. And just the quiet beauty, almost like an Ozu movie of that story. But then juxtaposed with like the craziness, the whole publishing world. Yeah, yeah. And... Well, and, and even like the Adam, we were talking about Adam Brody, his character Wiley. Yeah. So freaking. And I mean, we laugh, but it's like, I'm sure this comes from somewhere. Yeah. People and, like and the, this exist. Yeah. And the thing that's nice, like I said, good satire is hard. Hard. I mean, we do see it like we, we were pointing out with the, with the boys, but that's like very over the top, very slapsticky. You're dealing with extreme caricatures of the people you're trying to satirize. This, they pushed it just enough, enough. where it wasn't overly, overly done. It right. wasn't like... It was still rooted in very yeah, much Yeah, it reality. wasn't like, oh... That could never here, happen. Here I am at the restaurant and here comes the like hyper woke waiter or something yeah. like that. Yeah. The nothing like that or or the and this is this this definitely could have broached that, especially sure. with the character sure. like the Adam Brody character or the the judges. Probably the closest they came was that the, one judge. The, the female judge. Or the, uh, the, the, other, white, the guy too who's the extreme, right? Like the other two, they're they're there, but like I think she was the most that like came close to reaching overt parody. Okay, but not, not really. The guy. Kind of, but the not really not to, not. not to, I'm, I'm just guy. I'm just saying if there was a level between you had to judge them by one, two, three. Got the it. woman was the one that came the closest. Plus, she was the one who spoke the most. She was like the yes. she was almost like the leader of the group. Yes, yes. And even her, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility. The, that character that woman exists exists and she is not a caricature she is a actual person who believes that sort of thing and is so unaware deserving of being satirized yeah and they do it so well without becoming without resorting to the cartooniness that you would see in something like the boys yeah that's hard yeah because you when you're doing that, obviously you're not supposed to like those people and you don't but when you don't like something you could might push it a mm-hmm. little bit too far and then you end up with a cartoon character. Right. And that kind of takes you out a bit. Right. Here. I never felt that at all with anybody. Everybody who started out one way changed almost like uh, like his agent. Oh, uh, Arthur. Yeah. It started out, he was one way by the end of the thing. He was another, but it was 100% believable. Well, yeah. Thanks uh, for stopping by, yeah. money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The motive was absolutely there. And Issa Rae's character, same, yeah. roughly the same thing. Mm-hmm. She could have been an absolute stereotype of or caricature of that type of person who yeah. publishes that sort of thing coming in and some, oh, I only dress in traditional garbs or something. Just yeah. Something you'd see in like a Wayans Brothers movie or something like yeah. that. Yeah. No, they didn't go there. She was a rational person who made a decision. And that was her character. And it yeah. worked because Jeffrey Wright's character was like that too. He was, and, and that's another thing that I really appreciate. Jeffrey Wright's character, the way he played it, he was a gruff guy. He yeah. was, I guess, unlikable in certain degrees, but he wasn't a, 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 he wasn't annoying. He wasn't a prick. He was just a guy who was just like. He wasn't Larry from Throw Mama from the Train. That's exactly what I was thinking of. He <laughs> wasn't, a, 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 what was it, a Jesus thing? Uh, an insufferable oh, bitch. bitch. No, <laughs> Thelonious was a guy who was just like, I can't believe that this is the world that I live in. But it wasn't like he made it anybody else's problem. He wasn't insulting and berating to anybody else. Right. And that, to write that, to still get that sort of like- Nuance. Nuance and, and have his character still have that kind of like entertaining bite where he's gruff and kind of unlikable, but not really- mm-hmm. That is some stellar writing. That is some Absolutely. quality character development. He is a three-legged dog. The Oh, my God. <laughs> that that metaphor, that whole conversation that they had. About him. When, when, uh, Coraline when Cliff at the talking. end, he's just like, look at that. 
you got to kiss her being pathetic. <laughs> oh my God. That was so freaking Good. funny and true and yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. That yeah. is, I love the writing in this movie. Fantastic. Yeah. Phenomenal. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to, I know that you don't believe in them, but I'm going to give this movie a 10 because this couldn't be improved upon. I think that watching it now, it is binding, hilarious, thought provoking, heartbreaking, wonderful across the board. This is, there's no room for improvement. This is an absolute banger and a 10. <laughs> what say you? Uh, I don't give any a 10 to anything, so I Whatever. will give this like a 9.9. <laughs> This is about as close as you can get to perfect. Yeah. I mean, maybe at the very end with like the sort of the way they handled the, how the conclusion is of the script of the script. Uh, that was a little silly. Maybe that, yeah, it, maybe, maybe that was a little bit sillier than the rest of the film's tone. It was, it, it was a bit, it was sense. a tiny, it was a tiny bit outside. Oh, it made a hundred percent sense. Yeah, yeah. Especially the final reaction from Brody's character. He's yeah. like, Yes. Uh, We've got it. I need this transcripted. (laughs) Oh, Lord. But um, I I don't know if this is giving away anything, but, well, it's, what do you think of when Monk's character looks over and he sees the young man, I guess an extra right there and the young man. Plantation slave. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Plantation annihilation. Yeah. What did you think of, do you think that Monk has made peace with this world? Or is he going to continue to fight it? Do you think he will make more ridiculous books? Or is this just a one and done for him? I I think this is a one and done for him. Because if you were to like boil this movie down to like a specific, almost cliched plot, it's, oh, I need need money from my mom. Mm -hmm. And honestly, he's got it. Plus, now that he's doing this other thing where it's sort of like the reveal... Mm-hmm. he's saying his piece. He's saying what he meant to say. So I don't know if, I, I think in his future, it's okay, you wrote your, your Johnny Walker Red. Now you could spend so the rest of your labels. life producing Blue Label stuff. And maybe the the notoriety and the fame from the fuck book will draw attention to his other works of art. There is that possibility, yeah. yeah. But I don't think he... At, at this point, as far as being financially viable, I don't think he gives a crap about that. He's He'll be sending out his message unfiltered with his name on it rather right. than, what was it, Stag R. Lay or something? Yeah. Like that. <laughs> no pseudonyms from now on. He's, yeah. he's going to be open and honest, and he's going to, as his brother said, love me for who I am. All of who, who I, I am. am. Right. Yeah. We didn't uh, discuss it, but there is a scene of him burning the midnight oil writing and the lovely and amazing David Keith. Keith David. Keith David makes an appearance. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) What did you think of that scene? It was very, it was interesting because it was like his creations, but they also interact with him. Yeah. No, that was interesting that they're like, they're giving him. What am I saying next? They're giving advice like midnight black. No. No, you could do this better. You could do that better. Yeah, no, I, I I found that I found the whole thing entertaining. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that that scene really needs to be called out or anything. It's it's it was just his. Well, Keith David is in it. Yeah, it was low. It's always lovely seeing Thank Keith you, David, David and yeah. hearing his wonderful Child. voice. All right, nine point nine, which basically is a ten and a ten. Absolutely, do yourself a favor and check out American Fiction. You will not be disappointed. This is. Rated R for a reason, but... Just language. Just language, absolutely. But it is... This is the type of movie that gives you back tenfold, I feel like. I think that the messaging, the dialogue, the entertainment is just without equal. Without equal. I'm gonna... I've liked a lot of films. I liked Anatomy of a Fall. I liked Past Lives. I I liked Barbie a lot. But this is now... I, I like The Holdovers a lot. These were all nominated for Best Picture. This is now my favorite film of 2023. I would agree. I, yeah. I think I liked it better than all of the other ones. Yeah. And and Barbie had really sharp, excellent Barbie writing. Barbie had excellent, well. sharp writing. But like we said, we're Barbie also goes sat, into that satire. exaggerated 
It, but it goes into the exaggerated. Right. And this, because it's rooted in reality and just calling out those archetypes, as you, as if you will, makes it, and just the way that it's handled, it's just spectacular. Okay, uh, let's wrap it up. It, again, American Fiction from 2023, rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 57 minutes. This is currently streaming on Prime Video and MGM+, Plus, and also to buy rent on Prime. Absolutely, please, please, please go check it out. You will not be disappointed. And with that, we will bid you all a... Night. Good night. <laughs>